What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be taking you through DeepSeek's Janus Pro image generation and image understanding slash comprehension slash reading. I'm a little bit sick right now, so just bear with me. But this expands on yesterday's video. I showed you DeepSeek R1, their chat specific model. This one is a multimodal model that can do quite a few things at once. So let's get into it. This is DeepSeek's Janus. If we scroll down here on the GitHub page, we'll get a whole bunch of information about it when it was released. And of course, different benchmarks, comparisons, and the rest. I've seen thousands of videos talking about this, but this video is mainly focusing on how you can use it and what you can use it for, because it's quite impressive. Scrolling down here, you'll see there's Janus, Janus Flow, and Janus Pro. Janus Pro is the multimodal model that we're going to be focusing on here with image generation and image recognition. There's a 1 billion and 7 billion parameter model, which is essentially means you can run it on most systems. And if you have a pretty good graphics card with around 16 gigs of VRAM, you can run the 7 billion model to get even better results. But of course, if you don't have a graphics card, you can use Hugging Face completely for free by clicking the link in the description down below. That'll take you across to DeepSeek's Hugging page. You can scroll down here and you'll see Janus Pro 7B and this is what we're interested in. I'll quickly show you how it works online first for free that you can do in your browser. Browser, then I'll jump into actually self-hosting it with the 1B and 7B model, but it's a little finicky to get going, more so than just downloading Olama, for example. So the Hugging Face page. At the very top, you'll find the multimodal understanding section and scrolling down a text to image generation section, which we'll start with. The text to image generation of this model is underwhelming to say the least. There's a bunch of different examples here. I'll just choose this very detailed one that should usually give a pretty good image and we'll take away the seed so it's random. We'll generate an image and it should generate five different images based on whatever prompt we give it. This is just a sample one and as I've changed the seed, things should be different to what they usually are. The hugging face space that we're currently on is going to try and find a GPU that we can use for free. So this is going to take quite some time, usually around 30 seconds to a minute or so, which is pretty comparable to most systems, especially with lesser graphics cards. There we go. We've got some image responses here. It's the same old eye prompt. And in order to view these, just click the first one. I think we can expand it using this full screen button. There we go. We definitely can. We've got four different images here. They're all relatively okay in quality, but this model isn't really focused on generating images. The more impressive thing is understanding them. If I throw in just any old prompt here, such as, I don't know, a random mid-journey prompt, bam, there we go, generate images. We get a couple of different pictures here and they're all, well, I mean, they're, they're okay. The main issue with this is mostly the small image size. These are 384 by 384 instead of the usual stable diffusion 512 by 512, which drops what it can do at least somewhat. But of course, the overall cohesion of the image model isn't exactly the best. However, if we scroll up to this top section for the multimodal understanding, things get real impressive real quick. We can drop an image into here and question it about the image. It'll give us a response over here. There's two separate examples down here. One of them is to explain this meme. So as you can see, explain this meme, chat, it'll think for a moment. And after interpreting the image, reading text and things like that, it'll give us a response like this. Now, of course, you've probably already seen this as it's one of the super easy examples here. And if we check something a bit more complicated, like reading a complex math equation and converting it into latex code, which we can share on the internet or preview in other places after we sign in, because we've gone past our GPU quota, that's a nice Another good thing about hosting it yourself, we should now get a better response here. So let's try once more. There we go. We're given a bunch of code. If we copy this latex code, which is a representation of this and punch it into a website where we can preview it as such, we can render it out and here's our output image. So this image, although low quality is exactly the same. So yeah, it did work exactly as expected. These of course were the examples. Let's try something a bit more confusing. Using some cursive writing I found on the internet, let's say, quote the text and explain the image. It'll then think about it, interrogate the image, and here we go. So you can't let your failure define you. You, there's two yous here, have to let them teach you. Yeah, seems pretty good. You have to let them show you what to do differently next time. I suppose, even though this sentence hasn't been finished yet, so it kind of just guessed the next word there, and it's given us a response about what exactly is happening in the image. Not bad, it's actually really impressive, besides the one little mistake it had over here. It can also recognize things in images, so let's give it an image of the statue of liberty 
and let's say, what is this and where is it? Chat, it'll interrogate the image, come up with a response, and here we go, the Statue of Liberty located on Liberty Island in the New York Harbor. Pretty cool. Let's give it something a bit more complicated, a screenshot from Breaking Bad, let's say, what is this from and who are these people? interrogate and then we got this is from the tv series breaking bad good the two individuals are walter white on the left no and jesse pinkman on the right uh no but it did get half of it right so there's half points if we instead send this to chat Chippity and ask the same question the response that we get is more accurate hank schrader on the left and walter white on the right much better but of course this model can be run offline and it's infinitely smaller than what's running behind chat gpt this is a 7 billion parameter model and you can quite literally load it and run it on consumer graphics cards which is fantastic of course the accuracy is halfway there things are always improving but for what this is it's hugely impressive considering the actual model behind it janus pro 7p is only 15 gigabytes and it's got that much information stuffed into it it's really cool but of course it does have its flaws as again it's infinitely smaller than chat Jibity. so with that out of the way you can use this online it's a really great for recognizing things and testing it out obviously some things it'll have an edge on compared to chat Jeopardy. some things it'll do worse some things better but the fact that you can do this offline is fantastic and let's talk about how exactly we do that so how exactly do you download and run janus pro 1b or 7b well the easiest way to do this is of course the official github page on deepseek ai for janus and here scrolling down you'll see underneath janus pro in the quick start section you can just install this and you can use the multimodal understanding in a python script text image generation in a python script but you'll probably be better off using stable diffusion for this and scrolling all the way down a gradio demo which is exactly this which we've been interacting with on the internet up until now so if you'd like complete control of your data this is all we have to do besides downloading this github page here so let's do exactly that assuming you have a relatively powerful system with a good amount of ram or a relatively good graphics card let's do it there's two ways to download this first of all if you have a git installed you can use a command to git clone this otherwise if you don't know about that just click the code button over here and choose download zip to clone this off of github copy the link and instead of your downloads or something like that click at the very top in a file browser up here type cmd hit enter and it opens a command prompt window in that folder we'll use git clone space the link space dot to copy it into this folder and just like that it'll download and clone the latest version off of github into the folder here alternatively just open up the zip as such open up the janus main file and drag everything out into this folder here now that we're all in the same place how do we actually run this well you'll need python installed and in particular you should be using python 3.8 or better so let's do exactly that head across to python.org slash downloads and just choose download python over here then once the installer downloads open it up and on the first page make sure you have add to path ticked for this to work properly then if you haven't already close your command prompt window and head back to your download folder once again open up a new one so click up here cmd enter and now we're back here simply type python space two hyphens followed by version and hit enter to see what version of python you're currently using i would say copy and paste this command to install it but we need to use the gradio specific command down here so this one you'll just simply run this command if you're going to be using python i am going to be using anaconda just so i can have a specific folder with a specific version of python in it just to keep everything boxed up in this one place for the best compatibility so conda create give it the name of Janus or whatever you want Python equals followed by the version so 3.11 pretty good I'll hit enter to create the environment I'll need to confirm it it'll download and install Python and once it's done we can just activate it with conda activate name of the environment so Janus and there we go now we can use the installation command so we'll copy this pip install e dot and gradio inside of brackets and this should install the correct version so we'll just hit enter and wait for this to run through to completion now I get this 
error over here. This is why I say using the online version is just a lot simpler, where it's complaining about sentence piece. If I copy this, head across to the issues page on the Janus GitHub, search for it here, I get a couple of different responses and the solution is basically open up this file and change the version. So obviously this should be fixed at some stage in the future, but for now we need to work around it. So pyproject.toml will open this with any text editor. I'll open it with sublime text, but just plain notepad works fine. And inside of here, we'll search for using control F sentence piece. You'll see a couple of places where this pops up. All needs to do is find the Gradio version and change it from 0.196 to just 0.2. And we'll do the same right above. So sentence piece, change to sentence piece equal 02. We'll save this, close it and rerun our command. So there we go. The steps for Linux, Mac and Windows should be very similar. All that you need to do now to actually use it now that we've installed it is to use Janus Pro down to the bottom, this command to start it. But before we do, there's two things I want to show you. Inside of our folder here, we'll open up the demo folder and you'll find app underscore Janus Pro. Open this with any text editor and there's a bunch of code here. As you'll see, currently it's using Janus Pro 7B. The only way you can change this to the 1B version is to change this to 1. That's it. Then at the very bottom, you'll see this over here. Demo launch share equals true. Gradio is a nice web interface, but it can automatically create a link where you can access your Gradio instance from the internet just by clicking a link. That's not the best idea if you're just testing it locally. So I'll be removing this to turn it off. Otherwise you can use share equals false here to turn it off as well capital F. Once you do either of these, save the file and close it. Now we can actually run the start command, Python demo app Janus Pro dot pi. Pasting that in and running it, now the actual program should start up and download the model. The 7B model is gonna be quite a bit larger, something around 15 gigs, compared to the 1B model, which is around four or so. As I've already downloaded the model before, it's already set up. When you get to this piece of text over here, you'll see running on local URL, followed by a link. Select it using left click, right click to copy and open it in your browser. Otherwise, if you're using terminal or something similar, you can control click it as it's got an underline below it, meaning it'll automatically open in your browser. And there we go. Now we're on the same page multimodal understanding and text to image generation. It looks almost exactly the same because it is the same as this over here on the internet. Great, this one's just running on your PC. Let's do the same thing. Let's drop it an image, take our same prompt and chat. Now you'll see that this is gonna take quite a bit longer and your PC might lag a bit. If we open up our task manager here, on the performance tab, you can see my CPU is currently being used quite a bit and my graphics card, not much at all. So this model is most likely just running in our normal RAM and CPU. So it is what it is, but we'll wait for it to finish. While it's running, it seems to be using about five gigabytes of RAM. So there we go. In about 30 seconds, we have a response here. It's from the show Breaking Bad. The two individuals are Walter White and Saul Goodman. So uh, just as inaccurate, but at least it got the show right. And at least it's not saying the left and the right side without really knowing what's going on. The difference between this and something like ChatGPT is you can mess with the temperatures and things like that behind the scenes. You can make it less or more creative and you can change the temperature, which does something similar as far as I understand. You can make it do wacky things just by playing with this, which could either improve your response or obviously make it a bit worse. So 40 something seconds later, it gives us a similar response just as accurate and inaccurate at the same time. Now, of course, if we scroll down to the bottom to the image generation section, this will be pretty much the same. So generate an image of Breaking Bad or a movie poster for the TV series Breaking Bad, showing the main characters, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. We'll generate with a random seed, and this is probably gonna take quite a bit longer and maybe use a bit more RAM as it is generating five images at once, even though they're only 380 pixels-ish wide and high. So yeah, still about five gigs of RAM, and this could be VRAM running on your graphics card. It's just that things are a little bit finicky. We'll try in just a moment. It might not work, but for now, it's just using CPU and it shouldn't take too long. Again, the main breakthroughs with the DeepSeek are how small the models are, how cheap they were made and how efficiently they run. As all of the geopolitical reasons behind it, it's actually really impressive for what it is and it's a pretty big step forward. Also, not to mention DeepSeek R1 is a thinking model. I would assume this also has some thinking going on behind the scene where it reasons with itself before coming up with a final answer. Obviously, that isn't the case for image generation and 
this image generation isn't winning any awards, especially compared to Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey, or even Chat Jupity. And after about seven minutes, it just gave me an error. So I'm, hey, that's CPU image generation, especially when you're doing five at a time. Anyways, looking past that, how do we make this not actually just use our CPU and instead use our GPU as well? Well, that's a little bit difficult and it's not detailed anywhere. So let's try something. As I only have a 12 gig 3080 Ti, yeah, only, I can probably only really run the 1B model as it uses five or so gigs of RAM. The next one up needs about 15 or so, so I'm not really gonna be able to use it, especially with good speed. But if you have a 20 gig card or a 16, things should look real good for you. So let's try it. The first step to using PyTorch with a GPU instead of just a CPU is to install the GPU specific version. There's a few ways to do this. Obviously you can use just normal pip, but as I'm using Conda, I'll set it up using Conda here. From the PyTorch link down below, I'll select stable Windows Conda Python CUDA 12.1. In order to switch to this, we first need to uninstall the existing version of PyTorch. So first of all, run Conda remove two hyphens force PyTorch Torch Vision Torch Audio as such and hit enter if you're using Anaconda or Miniconda, any conda. If you're using just normal Python, rather use pip uninstall hyphen y torch torch vision torch audio as such, and then run the install command for conda as such, or the pip install command as such. We'll paste in our command here. This should install PyTorch and hopefully get things working. So yes, and we'll wait for it to download. There we go, it's done installing. Now we should be able to just launch this up again. And this time though, watching your VRAM in your task manager, you should see something different happen happens in that our graphics card actually gets utilized as this thing loads up. Now, I'm not surprised other creators haven't talked about doing this in their tutorials because it's it's pretty difficult. Things like a Google Collab already have PyTorch GPU installed and a lot of people have PyTorch GPU installed, but for someone who's doing this from the start, it's very confusing, especially when you need to do advanced things like this. But hopefully this video helped you and of course my hours of struggling before this. Waiting quite a bit longer, there we go, we can click the link and of course we can do the same things. So feeding it the same question, chat this time, we get a much quicker response in just two seconds compared to 30 something. This is fantastic. Of course, it's still getting the things wrong, but this is a five gig model with the entire world's information in it, pretty much. Scrolling down, let's try image generation once more. We'll try the same movie poster generation. And of course, this is the smaller model. So the response is gonna be, well, not as good compared to the usual one. It's hitting our graphics card, loading up even more VRAM. Hopefully we don't run out here. We very much might. Yep, things are gonna start slowing down and there we go, we're given something back. And would you look at that? Geez, the text is not good at all, but it's kind of got the gist of it. There's a bald guy and a guy with hair. Sure, it's got the, the green text, the sort of squares, but uh, yeah, it's not winning any awards. Of course, if we download a much larger model, such as the Janus Pro 7B, responses should be much better. But again, this model won't load on my graphics card. Instead, if you have a 16 gig card, open up a demo, app Janus Pro, and once again, change 1B to 7B, save and open it. But that's really it for this quick guide. This has been many hours in the making, and hopefully it's a better tutorial than any other ones out there. I'm pretty sure I covered many more bases than most other YouTube. So hey, there you go. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.